In this video, we will be discussing the n plus 1 query and how you can solve that problem in Ruby on Rails. The n plus 1 query occurs when we load a array of data from our database and we have a parent-child relationship with that data. So in that case, if we're iterating over the data and we try to access information about that parent record or that child record, then we are having this continual loop of making requests to the database. So we'll look at trying to solve this in a real example using one of our Ruby on Rails applications. To do that, we're going to use the Instagram application that we had built in a previous video. And before we jump into that, I want to announce the launch of my new course on Ruby on Rails 6. So this is aimed at beginners and you can check out this course in the link below. And we cover a lot of different areas in this course, right from the very basics of setting up your first Ruby on Rails application to how to use scaffolding, controllers, models, views. Uh, we cover pretty much everything that you need to know to build powerful Ruby on Rails applications. So I will be continually updating this course throughout the rest of the year, but check that out in the link below if you're interested and use the discount coupon to save some money on that course. So going back to our Instagram application now, you may notice that I have made some changes to this application since the previous YouTube videos I had on this build. So I've included a static sidebar now and the scrolling is completely separate and I've got a search box at the top. But other than that, most of the functionality is quite similar to before. So let's look at what we can do now to improve the performance of this by eliminating any n plus one queries. So I've intentionally introduced a few problems into this application based on the user feed. So let's go and have a look at what is happening and that will give us a better idea of what is an n plus one query and how do we solve it in our application. So here we're looking at the view file for the feed. So this will be the list of posts that gets output to the feed. So here on line seven, we have a array of posts that we're iterating over. And then on line 11, we have this post.account.username. So you can see here that the account is related to the post. And every time you see this kind of setup where we are calling the object and then we are calling a record related to that object, this is potentially a n plus one query. So there is a way around this and we'll discuss that now, but let's first look at our logs. So let's look at the Rails server logs to see what's actually happening in terms of the database queries. So this is our feed and you can see here that we are loading the posts. So this part is working fine. We're loading all the posts, but the problem occurs once we loop over those posts. So here you will see that we are loading an account. We're loading that account based on the ID of four. And then if we go down a little bit, we're loading the account again based on the ID of seven. And again, then account ID of one and three. So over and over again, we're loading these accounts. So each time this happens, we're making a request to the database. So for performance reasons, this isn't very good right now. So you can imagine if you have hundreds of posts in your feed, this statement will be called over and over again. So if we look at the post model, we can see that there is a relationship here between the post and the account. So in this case, the post belongs to an account, a single account. And if we look at the account model, we can see that that account has many posts. So there is this relationship here already. So the solution to this lies in the controller where we are selecting the data. So in this case, we are calling this post.where, we are basing it on some criteria. But in order to remove this n plus one query, we want to load those related data at the same time. And we can do that by using the includes method. So that way we are telling Rails that we want to run one statement to select all of that related data at once, rather than running multiple individual statements later for each individual record. So let's add this now to see how that looks. So here we'll say post.includes and then we pass in the model name that we are including. So in this case, it's singular, we're loading an account. That account will be related to these posts. So Rails is smart enough to figure this out and prepare the exact statements to load that data for us. 
So now we will reload the page and we will have a look to make sure everything is still working. And we see we've got the posts and the comments. And now we will check the server log to see what way things are looking. So here we can see that we are loading the posts as normal. And the accounts are being loaded. Now we're loading two accounts at the same time. So that is gripping that statement together, that select query. And there is some repetition in these queries still, so we'll investigate that further. But in this case, we can see that this is coming from the index view, and that appears to be loading all of these records at once. So that is solved in that one place in our code base. Now there is this other area that we are loading the post liked by user. So this is a helper file. And we will have a look at that also to see what we can do there. So piece by piece, you can solve each of these problems and reduce the amount of queries being loaded by your application. Now we have solved that one query, but there are multiple queries to make this work better. So the next one we will include here is the comments because the comments are also being loaded each time in this loop. If we look at the comment model, we can see that the comment belongs to a post. In that case, a post will have many comments. So the relationship this time is slightly different. So previously we were loading a single account, but this time we have multiple comments. So if we load this now, it will not work. The suggestion is the association named comment was not found. And the reason for that is that this needs to be plural in order to work. So now the error has gone and we will see that there are less requests for the comments being loaded. So now we can see that both the accounts and the comments are all being loaded in a single statement for each of those. So we're grabbing lots of different comments at the same time. So it's good to keep in mind when you're trying to improve the performance of your application that you need to really go through the Rails server logs line by line and try to understand what data is being loaded and where that request is coming from in your application code. So in this case, we're going to look at a helper file that we are using for the post likes. So here we actually have a direct call to the model and this isn't ideal in this situation. So we will try to improve this to utilize that n plus one solution that we already have in place right now. So this time we're going to call the post directly rather than the ID. And then we will call the likes based on that post. And we will check the size of that array of likes that have been received. So now let's go back to our news feed. And in here we will locate where we are calling this helper. So we want to pass in the post rather than the post ID. So let's just remove that. So going back to our controller now, we will also include the likes in this includes statement. So once we check the Rails server now, you can see that the likes are being grouped together. So you can take this further and eliminate all of these issues in terms of performance. Now, these are fine once we're just running a small application with a few users, but once you have hundreds of users or thousands of users, you can see an impact in performance if we don't eliminate these issues. But we have eliminated a lot since we started this video. And I think for the purpose of this video, we've kind of got to the point now where you understand what needs to be done and how you can apply this in your own applications. So that's about it for this video. If you've enjoyed this, make sure to subscribe to the channel for more Ruby on Rails videos and more programming videos. And you can also check out my website and I will drop a link to that in the description below. So on my website, you can access some of the pre-built applications that I've made in the other videos on my YouTube channel. And there's also links to the course that I've released. So the course will teach you how to learn Ruby on Rails from the beginning. So this is aimed at beginners to Ruby on Rails and it will teach you everything you need to build powerful Ruby on Rails application. So 
Well, that's it for this video. Hopefully you guys have enjoyed this and I will see you all in the next one.